Hello everyone, welcome to Man Manga Boy. Read a uh, kind of shocking series of events here. Like, what the heck are you? What are these? All right, let's talk about them. We got Shaman King. I decided to finally start reading the Omnis um, since Flowers is actually coming out and people are picking it up. So I did that. I, I grabbed them. These are three in ones and I have them all. I just didn't read them. Uh, they include like these little extras at the end if you guys haven't gotten them yet that weren't included in the originals. Um, so let's see if I can find them. But they aren't like anything too crazy. They're just like, they're here. Uh, so if you're like, oh, I have the singles. I don't know that I want to go get it. Like, don't, it's not worth it. But they're the uh, remixes. So the remixes are in here. Uh, I guess you should be careful about the spines. I don't know if you can see it, but I got a little crack on mine there. It was really minor, but I forget how much like blow, how much I blew through here. <laughs> um, so you can see here, Remix Track Volume 3, Shaman King, and you can see that the art is like blatantly redrawn to be much sharper than how it is in the original. And um, you can also see that there is a little story involved that wasn't in the original either. Uh, where is it? Right here. Um, at least I don't think it was. With uh, Tamao's... Um, friends here what their name are i forget what their name are it's like pochi and kochi something like that uh but like <laughs> this time they have the diapers on instead in the manga for kodansha they don't have the diapers on but they also don't show his balls it is just they say his stomach instead i mean whatever it doesn't really matter but like some of it is like doesn't make sense they like uh step on him and his stomach and he's like screaming in pain and it's like, uh -huh. that's funnier if it's his balls, but whatever. You know, we don't have to be killing men all day, I suppose. But these six volumes get a lot further than I remember it. So we get up to the point where um, Yo actually starts his training to get better because uh, he's realizing it after he lost the Faust that he is trash. <laughs> so uh, now he's trying to become a better shaman so he can become the Shaman King. Uh, or at least enter the Shaman King tournament because he's not even like really a candidate. He's just like a candidate to be a candidate in the Shaman King tournament at this point. So, uh, but yeah, I feel like a lot got covered um, in those six volumes that I remember. I feel like it was a lot longer before he even enters the Shaman King tournament. I remember being that he goes, um, he gets destroyed by Tao, then he does some training, and then he goes see Tao in China, and then they go back home, and then the Shaman King tournament starts. But uh, obviously I have things mixed up because I'm old man. We also started this new manga called Tokyo Aliens 1 and 2. I got this in a while back. I got three volumes of from Square Enix. There's a Square Enix bubble show. Um, this is a pretty interesting manga. If you guys have ever watched Jackie Chan Adventures, I would say it's very similar to that. This no-name guy gets caught up in this world of aliens and uh, he has to kind of play border patrol with the aliens. Uh, I know what you're thinking, this sounds identical to like World Trigger, but it really isn't much like World Trigger at all. Definitely more like Jackie Chan Adventures. He has to go to this like secret uh, organization through like telephone booths and like food, uh, fast food restaurants and things like that. So that cracked me up because that was identical to Jackie Chan. Um, and then they have to fight aliens to get them out. Sometimes they're peaceful, sometimes they're not. Um, and so they go through day-to-day uh, -day stories um, with the main focus being on finding the main character's dad's killer. Uh, it seems like there's a little bit of a drama or a hint going on that maybe that alien is um, this main character and they took the form of his dad, but we don't really know. Um, and much on that, that's just kind of what they're hinting at, at this point. Kimono Jihen Volume 4. This series is really freaking dark. Do not read this um, before bed. You will have nightmares. Uh, so we find out our main spider boy's uh, mom is over here and being forced to um oof, she's being forced to be raped by other monsters and the monsters are making half breeds with his mom and uh the mom is like in this cocoon and she's constantly giving birth to all these to all these um What's the word for it? All these siblings to him, all these offspring. So this guy can find a, uh, 
offspring that will make like the golden thread. Eventually he does that, uh, but he's trying to make more, I, I guess, is what I am understanding. Or maybe he's just trying to keep her there as a uh, bargaining chip so that way she can like stay around. But it is just fucked up beyond belief. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Shiki, I believe, is his name. It's his mom. You know, this is where we kind of left off last time. And it goes on for a while. Uh, we also get a startup of the next series, uh, the next arc, but really not too much of a hint in it. So I am going to be pretty excited to see how it goes from there. They like, they cap off these like really fucked up stories with like these fun little jokey ones like, uh oh, who's Kabane going to choose to be his girlfriend? And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> we just talked about all this really like hardcore adult stuff. That's kind of a big tonal shift. And like even the fox like goes crazy intense. I feel like these are just like like Kong's gonna eat you. Like look at that. Like man, that guy's dead, but he's not dead. You know, he's the main character. Oh, and then this lady, like this is the this crazy demon. Okay, they're having this fun like knockoff filler adventure. But bam, all of a sudden this demon shows up. She's like, yeah, I like this lady's hair so much. I pulled it off her head and killed her and took her hair. And then she's like, yeah, I took this lady's face and I ripped it off from her and I made it my face. I want it to be this guy's favorite person. And it's like, look at this, that's disgusting. And so, yeah, it's a, uh, oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's nuts. So yeah, Kabane, uh, obviously being a unfeeling, emotionless demon half-breed is, uh, you know, whatevering about it. But Cheeky obviously was freaking out and, you know, people are, have, have emotions in it, but like nobody reacts the way I would be reacting. I'd be like, get me the fuck out of here. This is creepy. This is messed up. I gotta leave. So every time I read it, I think to myself, man, I can't believe they put this in Jump Plus because this is, this is 18 plus stuff to me. Uh, like this, it's like, that's, that's nightmare fuel for sure. Um, <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights of the Apocalypse. This series is not Nightmare Fuel. This one I really enjoy. Uh, so we finally get the Four Nights of the Apocalypse kind of shown, um, or at the very least announced. Uh, we can see Tristan's all grown up now, which is really exciting because uh, you knew he had to be since this was a little bit later on in the timeline. We run into Meliodas, which is really cool. Uh, we also find out that he's uh, Lancelot's one of these um, Four Nights of the Apocalypse as well, which was fairly obvious, at least in my opinion. We also get to see Percival just go absolutely batshit insane. Like you see, he's just like saying all this stuff. He's got this black thing on his head, and he just like totally dissolves this guy's arm. Like look at this. He grabs him by the arm, right, and he's squeezing and he's saying all this like nonsense stuff that's like upside down. Donnie and nice ends, and then you know what I mean. It's like all weird. You took them all from me. I'm all alone again. Grabs his arm and squeezes all the life out of it. Like, look at that. And he's like screaming. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> and um, they tried to like heal it with like angel magic and they can't heal it. And then Percival's like, oh yeah, I can heal it. No problem. And then he just heals it. And I'm like, what? Uh, but Percival's obviously got some strong magic that they do not know about at this time, which is uh, bes besides his healing magic, because we knew he had really good healing magic. So I'm very excited to find out more about that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the main gist of it right now. We're trying to just get the last of the knights. I think Galahad is the last one that they're missing. Uh, and Galahad somewhere in town apparently has the power of the sun, or at least they're kind of hinting at it because they say he's got gold and white armor. And I think they said that he has the power of the sun. Uh, so that would be, um, what's his name? Uh, everyone's favorite. Um, Gauther, the lion sins power, uh, how he gave that up towards the, not Gauther, oh shoot, what in the heck is his name? Escanor, there we go, Escanor's power. Gauther was mentioned in this volume, but obviously not too much. We've seen Gauther in past volumes as well. The only sins that we're missing kind of awareness on is um, Deanne at this point, I think, and Merlin. I believe those are the only two they haven't mentioned anything of they do mention bond and his wife are um you know worried about their son lancelot and they say that he's welcome home in time but lancelot's like i ain't going home until i do this thing and then not saying what the thing is obviously because they don't want to spoil it uh so that's fine um but yeah merlin and i think diane are the only two that they haven't really explicitly said what's going on or even hinted at 
Merlin especially, I mean, we left off, she was with Arthur, and then now all of a sudden Arthur is evil, and I think they've seen, they've shown, like, a few clips of, you know, Merlin there, but nothing as to what's happening. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting thing. Eden 0, volume 21. We land on good old Ziggy's planet, and we are ready to fight Ziggy, apparently, which, uh, if you ask me a little too soon, I don't think that we're quite ready for that. But we're entering the final arc, we're fighting... I, I think anyways we're fighting Ziggy's planet we've got a dragon collar here you can see some dragons entering all over the place which is just totally nuts to see it makes me wonder if the Eden Zero itself is a dragon I'm kind of thinking it is but we'll have to see uh, to be certain we also have um, it's pretty much a galactic uh, Orisi and Galactica versus the Orisi and Cosmica or something like that is that what they call it Justica Something. There's two different Orison CAs. I don't know how to say that word in this series, um, but this guy's one of them. <laughs> He's 420 meters tall. I think that that is a Hiromashima joke for memes. Um, he does do that from time to time. Uh, it seems like she's trying to get rid of um, this big old creature's name's Dread Crow. And, uh, you know, he's probably going to be easy peasy. But their, their main goal right now is to summon the Chrono Face to take out this whole town and bring it back to the way it was. In doing so, Ziggy's influence would have never happened and they can kind of erase everything that happened before it. Uh, of course, they have kind of mixed feelings about that because, you know, the fact that she can summon, Rebecca can summon these Chrono Pages means that she probably caused some events she didn't mean to cause, especially like Weiss um, kind of joining the crew and losing his future the way they're supposed to be. Uh, but they say, no, I'm happy that I'm with you and, uh, you know, like you started a whole other chain of events and possibly made people's lives better. Um, and she's like, maybe, like, there's so long, you know, because, like, you can't really know that, and, like, I get why she'd be upset about it, but I just, like, think it's odd that, um, they're like, no, trust me, it's good, just please summon the Chrono Page and kill Ziggy, <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? It's kind of odd that, that but they would even think to, to do that, because I feel like, uh, Chrono Pages are typically, I don't know, what's a good word for it, um, they're forces of nature for sure, but, like, it doesn't seem like anybody would want to summon them, and if they do, they just, like, I don't know, it'd be like starting a fire and saying it was a freak accident, I feel like, you know what I mean? It's like, you can feel good about being an arsonist. I don't know, maybe they will. <laughs> Who can say? Peach Boy Riverside, Volume 10. Uh, the demon god, Juice, gets outed and finally decided, uh, well, not decided. Um, finally, everybody believes she's a demon god, and so we have to make her happy again and show her that, yes, demons and humans can, or ogres and ogres and humans can coexist. So now that she's an ogre god and people are happy, then humans are happy, but of course our antagonists are not. I really don't know whether or not to call Momoshiki a antagonist or a protagonist still, uh, but that is something that we're gonna have to figure out later on down the road. It seems like this princess who's on the cover here also has the ability to kind of, uh, what's the word for it? See ogres and humans to some degree. Uh, but she doesn't do it with a peach eye. You can see what juice looks like here. It looks just absolutely demonic and terrible, but obviously she's not. Also, um, the Overlord is coming in as well with his new posse, and they are all looking for, you know, um, what's the word for it? Peace? It doesn't seem, it seems like he can tell where, um, not Carrot, uh, shit. Uh, what's her name? Not Sally. Man, not, I'm like doing bad on names today. Anyways, they can see where uh, the rabbit is headed, um, or Crow can see where the rabbit is, uh, which is interesting because obviously he's trying to avoid them, but at the same time, you know, we have to wonder why that is, because I thought that they were getting rid of most of their power, but I guess not enough for them to not realize that. But, you know, also she seems to notice that, um, you know, Crow's there too, or the Overlord but doesn't seem to do much about it. Not worried about it at all. So yeah, this has been a very interesting story. I really do like Peach Boy Riverside. It's by uh, Cool Kyo Sinyangia. I don't know how to say that name at all, but you'll recognize it from like Miss Kobayashi Dragon Maid, um, as well as uh, the, um, the deities manga that's going on where it's like peaceful deity, the deities only know peace or something like that, those, those lines. Uh, same author who does that, or at least artist anyways. 
the art always looks completely different. So I do wonder if it's an artist, singular, or if it's like an artist team, kind of like how Clamp is. But I don't, I, I don't have a clue. Um, anyways, that is it. That's what I read this week. I know it doesn't look like as much, but that's six volumes right here. <laughs> I feel like Shaman King is going to overwhelm my reading log. Uh, so that's six, nine, and then three is 12. Again, some series I would strongly recommend checking out for sure. You know, definitely Fortnite's Apocalypse if you like Seven Deadly Sins. Tokyo Islands was really good. If you like creepy manga, Kimono Gien. And Peach Boy Riverside has a ton of um, great action in it. But uh, Eden Zero this week was kind of slow. I feel like we're really rushing to the end. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say slow. It feels rushed. Um, it does making it not as interesting. We just got the time skip and all of a sudden we're rushing into the final battle. It's like, what if like Naruto went straight to Shippuden and then from Shippuden just decided to fight Madara? I'd be like, man, that's kind of lame. So I'm kind of annoyed that the Eden Zero um, time skip isn't fleshing out more about the characters, but it could be jumping the gun just because we're on Ziggy's planet doesn't mean we're at the last part. I mean, it is still going on in Japan after all. Uh, and Shaman King, of course, at this point, I mean, I feel like people already know if they like it or not, but definitely worth checking out. It's a good classic shonen. So that's what I read this week. Let me know what you guys thought about it down below in the comment section. And we will see you next week for another manga read along. Bye-bye.